is to that legislation, they had to pay international student tuition fees, which were tremendous. I mean, it's almost, uh, in many places, it's three times as high as the in-state tuition, as the in-state resident tuition. So what it did is it lowered the barriers to higher education for undocumented students. However, in reality, it didn't lower them that much because most of these students come from very low income families. The vast majority of them, and our data support this, are first generation and their family to go to college. They come from working class backgrounds where their parents, for the most part, are making minimum, are working at minimum wage jobs. So, you know, even in-state tuition with no financial aid is prohibitive. It's still very difficult to come up. Say you get admitted to UCLA, as an example. Um, there, as an in-state resident, tuition every year uh, is about $12,000, uh, somewhere in that ballpark. Well, that's a significant amount of money for families where, you know, the household income is 20000 or thereabout, for a family of five or six. You know, that's just impossible. There's no way that they can contribute half of that household income for tuition for, you know, for their, their child. And so it, it although it's so though it's lower the bar, the you know, the, the barrier, it, it it's only been minimally. Now there is only one state that has taken an additional step and provided in state funds to help students pay for tuition. And this is the state of Texas. They were the first one to pass in state tuition uh, legislation. And they're also the only one to have passed legislation to provide state funds to help students pay for tuition. Now this is what a lot of other states are, are trying to do. California has tried to do that. Um, for example, Senate Bill 160, which was sponsored by Senator Gil Cedillo, um, was passed by both chambers of the legislature here in California. It reached uh, Governor Schwarzenegger's desk in December and he decided to veto it. Um, and so that was a significant setback for undocumented students here in California because it would have allowed more students to gain access to higher education. Now what has happened ever since is the bill has been reintroduced, it's making its way through the legislature again, and um, it will probably reach the governor's desk again, maybe by the end of the year, maybe early next year. And so, you know, different folks who work on this issue are trying to work a different approach to compel the governor to rethink, um, you know, his vetoing of that bill. We are working very hard to provide our data to the governor's office so that he can also consider, um, you know, some of that information that we've gathered uh, as he makes his decision uh, about the bill. That was great. Um, now, another policy um, I think issue that the voting public needs to consider. And you know, what our goal is not only to educate politicians, but also educate the voting public. And in our work, in our presentation, we presented this research at various research conferences and, and also other settings where there are, you know, uh, folks who vote on these issues, who write to their representative to say, you know, I'm against this issue, I'm for this issue. And one of the things that we work really hard to do is educate the public about the economic impact to them, particularly the economic benefit to them. Now we know that um, there was a study that was released by the Census Bureau late last year that talks about the differences in lifetime earnings between someone that has a high school degree versus someone that has a college degree, graduate degree. And they find that lifetime earnings for an individual with just a, with just a high school degree, it's about 1.2 million. Now you increase that to a college degree, the lifetime earning goes up to $2.2 million average. So that's twice as much earnings. So that's twice as much um, income that is taxed, that tax that contributes to the tax base, contributes to Social Security, so that individuals who um, you know are retiring or who are who depend on social services, and all of us depend on the tax base to help government run, 
it's in our interest to make sure that individuals get a college education because they'll get better, better paying jobs. Um, there have been various international and national studies looking at the return of investment in college. Um, places like Texas, for example, before they passed the in-state tuition legislation and also the legislation to provide in-state funds, they found the state controller's office in Texas found that for every dollar that the state of Texas invested in providing access to higher education for undocumented students that the state of Texas uh, received five dollars back. So, you know, a dollar towards an undocumented student's access to higher education results in five dollars to the Texan economy. That's a pretty significant return of that investment because these are folks that not only are they earning more and paying more taxes, they're also consuming more, they're buying more things, they're buying homes uh, which create jobs, they pay sales tax on that. Um, also, uh, there is research to suggest that individuals who are college educated are more likely to be civically engaged, to run for public office, to play active roles in city and state governance, uh, to have leadership positions, um, all of these things. Um, and, and so the public doesn't really think about this or doesn't real realize this when they take a position that, you know, I'm against, against investing money into these individuals that are here illegally, you know, they don't think about, well, economically and socially, it impacts you in a negative way if you take a stand against providing access to higher education. And, you know, and this is something that is not discussed in broader media. It's not discussed in CNN. It's not discussed in Fox. It's not discussed in the local news. But but it's real. I mean, the data is there. The evidence is there. I mean, we've known this for many, many years. Um, and it's missing from the public discourse about immigration. And it needs to be a part of it because the voting public needs to know the full range of facts before deciding on, on these issues, before rather than being informed by uh, passion, oftentimes by prejudice, uh, we need to be informed by the facts, and, and the facts speak for themselves that, you know, this is an investment in all of us. You know, it's not charity. It's not giving away money that it's not going to come back. We have recently concluded a study focusing on an immigration issue that has received very little press coverage. However, it's an issue that affects students in public schools. Approximately 65,000 students graduate every year from public high schools uh, in the United States uh, that lack legal authorization. These students, for the most part, were brought to the United States by their parents before the age of five, are unaware of their legal status, and when they're about to graduate and go to college, they realize that they're unable to do so because they don't qualify for any type of financial aid. The study suggests that this results in a tremendous loss of talent for American society. We find that these individuals are deeply committed to American society, to their communities, to following professions uh, for which there is a shortage of, like teachers, doctors, lawyers, uh, civic uh, servants, and, and states have been unable to address that issue. Um, there is a federal legislation called the Federal DREAM Act that is going to try to address that issue, but it hasn't really moved much in the past five years since it has been introduced. States have been struggling with supporting these students, but have also met with limited success because the voting public is opposed to many of these measures that are seen as being um, uh, giving away resources to immigrants. Uh, we hope to be part of those policy discussions and educating the public um, about how these individuals, investment in these individuals, is actually a benefit for all of us.